Hello, welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the desk today we have a customer's radio and a good old Rotel RVC240 that's got some issues. Now, it's in quite bad condition, but in, inside should hold some surprises for us. That's why I've um, agreed to do this one. So let's have a look at it. There's nothing a bit of spray paint can't sort out on there. So we open it up. Speaker wires just fell off. That's fine. We can reconnect that. And first off, we're greeted with a add on board there. Now, I believe this is a noise squelch. that's fine a close up of that so yeah it's definitely the, the noise squelch unit looks like it's been in there for quite a while but that's not the only surprise that this radio holds as we turn it round we can see you eagle eyed people there is no PLL chip. So the customer wants this noise squelch taken out. So we're going to take it out and reinstate the normal squelch circuit. But as you can see, there is no PLL chip. None. Our 7137 has disappeared. So that can only mean one thing. There is some magic somewhere else so let's take the top off and have a look at this and sure enough we're greeted with a big conversion board underneath so I wanted to try and Reverse engineer maybe this board see what it's all about Some of you people out there may recognize this board I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that fitted them Looking at it, we've got three ICs one definitely looks like an EEPROM Not sure what that big one is we've Got a smaller one on the end. I'm not sure what that one is yet. But we have a fault anyway. This unit is dead. So we're just going to check. We'll check the obvious things first. And our reverse polarity diode looks like it's short circuit. So yeah, definitely short circuit. So that needs to be replaced. Yeah, definitely short. So let's get that changed. So there's our diode out of the radio. My probes are playing up a bit there, but yeah, it's definitely not as it should be. So we'll replace the diode and it's still not coming on. So absolutely stony cold dead should be easy enough to find so I've got my meter on the back of the on and off switch on one side we have supply and the other side we have nothing so is our on and off switch open circuit it's certainly looking that way so we'll try a bit of switch cleaner first see whether that brings it to life And nope, still nothing. So we're going to have to try a bit further with this. Oh, it just started to show a bit of life there. So yeah, it's definitely that. 
You see, the switch cleaner has done something. So let's um. So it is reading out of circuit, but as soon as you put any load on it, it just goes again. So the contacts must be going high resistance. So let's see if we can fix it. So I'm just going to push the contacts together with the screwdriver. And sure enough, it's definitely the switch contacts. So you can see it has come on. We have a channel display, but no signal meter display and light. But luckily that's just a blown bulb, but that looks bright enough. So let's have a look at this switch. It does look like it's been clean before and it does look like it's had a bit of a hard life. So maybe we can move that um, switch contact up a little bit, put it on a bit of a fresh piece of metal. Sure enough. Doing that has made it work again. So that should be fine. So it transmits. So there's our UK 40. Very good. Now the surprise on this radio. We have mid band. And we have low band. Now somebody must have done some real work to get it to spread this far. But yeah, UK 40, mid band and low band. On a three way switch, very nice. Now I can see there's some additional components on the back of the board dotted about. And I think there's been some other capacitors changed. So we've got a logic gate of some variety. We have an EEPROM and we have a big chip. And what is this chip going to be? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get the label off. And we can see it's an MC145151, which is a parallel input PLL chip, very similar to the 145106, but with a lot more inputs and a lot bigger. Um, range so looking at this we can see all its inputs and with this being a control line input there is lots of um, inputs on there it's not like the serial PLL we use but it's nothing untoward, it's nothing that we haven't seen before. We've got all the connections that we're used to. Oscillator in, oscillator out, PD out, selectable R values for the step size. And yeah, so it shouldn't be too hard to try and reverse this one. I did actually spend time reversing it. But to actually implement it into a radio is a lot of work. So I'm going to stick to my LC7132 boards because they're much easier and a lot less faffing about trying to install it. So we need to put a new grain of wheat bulb in the signal display. Just lights that up nicely. I'm going to give the front a clean for him. Make it look a little bit more respectable. Which it has done. And the front glass has fallen out. Transmits and receives good. I know the noise squelching there. He did ask me to take it out later. So we did do. 
Everything's working nicely. So there we have it, a Rotel RVC240 with some nice surprises inside. And the repair turned out well, so I think this will be um, useful. Useful again, should we say. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, join Patreon. Have a look at my new website, which has got all my boards listed on there. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next uh, video.